Hey all you comic book fans, tonight is your night. Maybe you've got comic books around your house, sitting, collecting dust, maybe they're making a mess and stacks all over, or maybe you have them in those long boxes stored away somewhere, but nobody gets to see those. We want to help you take them out of the box and put them onto the wall in this special do-it-yourself edition of Sanctified Pop. I've got an eight-foot comic book wall behind me. Tonight we're going to be installing a four-foot comic book wall in my son Zach's room. You can do this project on your own for about ten dollars is it. And so um, enjoy tonight's episode. We're going to be showing you some of Zach's favorite comics at the end of the episode, talking a little bit about comic books too, but enjoy this project. How's it going guys? Welcome to this episode of Sanctified Pop. It's been almost a year now and we're back with a DIY episode of how to build your own comic book wall. Now you saw the one downstairs and it was about, I don't know, eight feet long. And today uh, I don't have that much space in my room because as you can kind of see behind me, all my wall is covered with these awesome posters. So what we're going to do is make a four foot one for my room. And all we need is four of these uh, tile dividers, which cost about like two or three dollars at Home Depot. Uh, a couple packs of command strips, a pencil, and a tape measure. So it's really not that hard to do. It's only going to take us like probably 30 minutes. All right, guys, this is the area of the wall that we're doing it over, right over my dresser. Uh, along this wall, I have my projector, so it looks like there's nothing there right now, although that is where I play my Xbox. So we're going to be putting it right over my dresser kind of lined up with Groot's head and then the side of the uh, area we're projecting on. Alright guys, so what we just did is we took one of these four foot, command, or four foot tile dividers and we lined it up with Groot's head here uh, with the end of it so that I give a little bit of extra space and then we lined it up with the ceiling, put command strips along the back and just stuck it on there. What we did here was we put a comic book on the top row on each side. So we'd have the angle right on the second one so it's matching the first one. Uh, and then we make sure the comics are lined up to the very edge here. And it should be the right size. Then we're going to mark this with the pencil and then command strip it on. So we got the last comic book going in this top row. With the four foot one you can fit six comic books, a little bit of space. And then if you wanted to, I suppose you could put a seventh one in there, but the ends are going to go outside of the uh, dividers. Um, so I'm just going to stick with six in the space. And how I like to put these in is I put the bottom in first, and then I'll line up the top here. Put the top in, and it should just slide nice and smoothly. If it's not sliding on one side or right in the middle, that means that side is too high, and there's not enough space in between them. And so you can just move that down just a tiny bit, and it should fit just fine. Alright guys, so the second row went on pretty much the same as this first row in uh, terms of this divider here. But the one thing you got to be careful about is the thickness of your comic book. And I knew that it might be a stretch with these four in the middle here, just because they are not standard size comic books. They're the same height, same width, but their thickness is like probably one and a half times that of all the standard ones that I put up on here. Um, graphic novels will not work, just so you all know. Fair warning right here. Um, but these four did work, it's just I had to be a little more careful and slow with them, otherwise I would end up bending them, and I really didn't want to do that. Guys, right, so we're going into the big reveal, so we finished our project here, and here it is. So it looks like that. Another option is to spray paint it whatever color you want, that would work as well, just make sure you dry, otherwise you're going to mess up your comic books. Um, so I'm just going to go through and talk about some of the comic books here that I, uh, that I really like. We're kind of looking at the big comic book wall over here. And so I'm going to go through and tell you guys why I chose each one. So the one on the top left here is a really cool variant that I like. It uh, features Thanos and Death pretty prominently, um, as well as showing uh, Groot and Rocket cheating at poker. This one I just really like the artwork. That one's the end of the Guardians of the Galaxy series. This one is an Infinity Gauntlet and... Guardians of the Galaxy uh, Marvel Legacy comic book, so it's kind of a flashback. Uh, it's another variant that I like a lot, and one more variant that I like a lot. That one has Lockjaw and Groot on it, and I really like Groot and Lockjaw. Uh, and then we go to the Amalgam comic book series. 
This is Spider-Boy team up, so it's Spider-Man and Superboy teamed up. If you don't know, Amalgam is the DC and Marvel crossover. That's what most of these are here. I right, so I have DC versus Marvel number four right there, number three, number two, and number one. So one through four there. That's all that they had in that series. And then the Spider Boy is one of the shoot offs of those uh, heroes. And then they have the Amazing Spider Man number three hundred and one, which is a Todd McFarlane comic book illustrated right after the famous three hundred one. And then I have the Black Bolt series right down here. Some of my favorite covers from that one. That one features Absorbing Man. And then another one with Lockjaw, because Lockjaw and Black Bolt are related. And then Captain America. And then in the reflection, you can kind of see Black Bolt right there. And that's a Marvel Legacy one as well. So about a half hour's work tonight. And this room just keeps getting cooler and cooler. Great job, Zach. Thanks, Dad.